to talk about plants, Becky. This is a book tube. beautiful booktubers I'm Becky Bookworm and I'm here today to do a book haul so I've got quite a lot to get through so I'm just going to get stuck in first up is Yorkshire Dales 40 favourite walks me and my partner have started doing this thing called Adventure Sunday where on a Sunday we go out into the countryside and we go somewhere and we go for a walk and we go and have a look around and we just have a nice time so we've just been looking things up on the internet or going with friends recently but I thought I'd get this and it gives you little maps and all different places, um, different length walks, Penny Ghent, which I've done before, one of the three peaks. And I just thought it'd be a useful book and it's just, it's got a lovely little picture on it there, look. So that one was practical for my first one. Next up, Signal to Noise, Silvia Moreno Garcia. This I picked up because it was giving off a bit of an 80s vibe and you probably you probably heard me going on before that I am a child of the 80s so I love things all 80s. This is about a 15 year old called Mesh or Meshe who has two friends Sebastian and Daniela. They are into vinyl records. She discovers how to cast spells using music. Uh, things start to look better for them and then according to the back of this it flips forward two decades when she returns for her father's funeral and it goes on from there so it just sounds like quite a good story I don't know much about it as you've probably noticed what's going on my shoulders as you've probably noticed I don't like going into these things knowing too much I've not really heard anybody talk about this on booktube but and it's a nice floppy, oh, what for that hair grip? Well, it's a nice floppy book and we like floppy books, don't we? Next up, The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvader. I listen to this on audiobook and I, as you've heard me say before, I just don't get the most out of audiobooks, so I want to go back and read it because I've probably missed absolutely loads. For those that don't know, it's part of a series and it's about a girl who thinks that, I think her name's Blue, and she thinks that the first boy she kisses is going to die and there's this group called the Raven Boys who are looking at things to do with ley lines and trying to find something out about this secret thing. I can't really, like I said, I've listened to it on audiobook and I can't remember, but I've heard nothing but good things about this. I think it's YA, um, but yeah, I can't wait. Next up, this, what used to be a library book, I think, judging by the thing, it's actually come from Tomball Memorial High School in Texas, I think that is. So this is Jacoby. This has been going around booktube and it sounds really good. It's set in the 1800s and Jacoby, I think, is an occult investigator. History of Heavy Metal by Andrew O'Neill. Andrew O'Neill is a stand-up comedian that I saw when I went to Edinburgh Fringe and I actually got him to sign... Oh, it's got flyers in it. Got him to sign this book. It says, for Becky and Luke, Stay Metal, Edinburgh, August 2017, and they signed it. He's also put Mostly Luke in brackets because I forgot to ask him to sign Luke's name when I was in the queue. And I haven't said. So this is, it is what it says. It's Andrew O'Neill going through the history of different types of metal, bleh, different types of home metal and where it's come from. If it's anything like the show that he did at the Fringe, it's going to be really useful and informative. Ali Smith, Autumn. This is, I think, long listed for the man booker. I've heard some good things and some bad things about this, but I've been looking for some Autumn reads. Oh, my back. So I figured I'd pick this up and give it a go when I finish Sci-Fi September. Invisible Planets, 13 Visions of the Future from China, edited and translated by Ken Liu. This is an anthology of contemporary Chinese science fiction. I can't remember who it was I saw talking about this, but it sounds fucking awesome. So when I saw it in the shop, I had to get it. I will... I don't think I'm going to get to it as part of Sci-Fi September, but I definitely want to get to it soon because it sounds so good. The next is The Night Watch by Sergei Lukyanenko. Sergei is a Russian author and there is also a film adaptation of this book called Nightwatch that's absolutely amazing. I think it's from like 
2004 but I absolutely loved it and I didn't realise it was a book until I saw this in Waterstones at the weekend. Smoke in the streets of Moscow, indistinguishable from the rest of its population are the others. Possessors of supernatural powers and capable of entering the twilight, a shadowy world that exists in parallel to our own. Each other allows allegiance either to the dark or the light. The Night Watch is the first book of the Night Watch trilogy, follows Anton, a young other owing allegiance to the light. As a Night Watch agent, he must patrol the streets and metro of the city, protecting ordinary people from the vampires and magicians of the dark. When he comes across Fe- when he comes across Svetlana, a young woman under a powerful curse, and saves an unfledged other, Igor, from vampires, he becomes involved in events that threaten the uneasy truce and the whole city. So, like I said, I've seen the film, I really loved it. If you haven't seen it, give it a watch. And that's going to be good too. I'm just going to show you guys, I treated myself to a new cactus today, amongst other things. Look how cute it is. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet. Spiky or something. I also bought some heather as well. Look how pretty it is. Look at the colour. And I love this, like, rustic. Stop talking about plants, Becky. This is a book tube. Next, The Summer That Melted Everything by Tiffany McDaniel. This was a cover by <laughs> completely. If you can see that there, it like shines and it's all fancy. It says Field in Bliss. Has... I've bought a lot of books that are set in the 80s this month. Field in Bliss has never forgotten the summer of 1984, the year a heatwave scorched the small town of Breathed, Ohio, the year he became friends with the devil. When a tattered and bruised 13-year-old boy turns up in a bru... in Breathed, is it called Bree? I'm thinking pronouncing this wrong. Claiming to be certain himself, everybody assumes he's just a runaway. But when strange things start happening to the townsfolk, there are some who start to believe that Sally is exactly who he claims to be. So I think I'm going to read this in October, because October is the time to read spooky things. Also, I'm hosting a spooky reading challenge with the lovely ladies over at the restricted section. It's the last week in October. There's just three challenges to do. It's pretty casual. Um, I'll link the video above and below. Uh, but if you want to take part, it'd be really good if you could join us. And it'll be on Instagram as well if you want to post there. And it'll also probably be on Twitter as well. So if you want to join in, please do with Spooky Reading Challenge. Like I said, I'll link it. Next up is the winner of the Man Booker Prize 2013. It is The Luminaries by Eleanor Caton. I wasn't into following uh, book prizes or anything back in 2013. It's only in the last couple of years that I've started being interested since I've got into booktube, really. Um, but I saw, look at the sign on this. I saw this on the table in Waterstones. And even though it is a hefty 832 pages, after I read the back of it, I had to buy it. It just sounds really good. And I know I keep reading stuff off the back, but I've got a terrible memory. And if you want to know what these books are about while you're watching my video, I have to read off the back half the time. It's 1866 and Walter Moody has come to make his fortune upon the New Zealand goldfields. On the night of his arrival, he stumbles across a tense gathering of 12 local men who have met in secret to discuss a series of unsolved crimes. A wealthy man has vanished, a whore has tried to end her life, and an enormous fortune has been discovered in the home of a luckless drunk. Moody is soon drawn into the mystery, a network of fates and fortunes that is a complex and exquisitely patterned as the night sky. I don't know what it was, just something really pulled me in and I thought, well, I'll wait until there's a tome topple and I'll probably do this one. Next, on to graphic novels. So I bought one, two, three, four, five graphic novels, but in fairness, three of these were bought for my partner for his birthday, which was at the end of August. So we have Transmetropolitan number four. For those that don't know and haven't heard me talk about it before, Spider Jerusalem is a jaded journalist that spent, ele I think, 11 years living away from everybody. He basically secluded himself and became a hermit. He's been called back into the city where everybody, everything's depraved, people take drugs all the time, morals are pretty much non-existent, and he is called to report on various things. For some reason, everybody there loves him and he has to investigate certain things and corruption and that sort of thing. So we will see where this one goes. Can't tell you much more than that because with it being number four, it'll just spoil all the ones previously. But I really like it. <laughs> see on the back, I hate you all. And this is Spider Jerusalem. 
Lock and key, welcome to Lovecraft. This is volume one and look how beautiful it is. People have told me for ages that I should get into this and I never have. So I figured a perfect time would be my partner's birthday when I can buy it for him and read it anyway. Lock and Key tells of Key House, an unlikely New England mansion with fantastic doors that transform all who dare to walk through them. A home to a hate-filled and relentless creature that will not rest until it forces open the most terrible door of them all. And apparently this won the Bram Stoker Award. So that sounds pretty cool. And I like, look at this key. And it's like sort of embossed on the front. And then we have Descender 1 and Descender 2. I've heard Sam over at Thoughts on Tomes talk about both of these. It's a time set in the future when people are scared of AIs and they don't use them anymore and they've all been, I think they've been thrown away or destroyed or whatever. And it tells the story of this little boy here who's trying to find his family, his human family again. So it sounds like it's going to tug at the heartstrings, but I also really love stories about AIs. So yeah, it was, it was buy two, get a third free in Forbidden Planet. So I got these. And the last one I got was Bitch Planet number two. I've been waiting a long, long time for this. I quite enjoyed Bitch Planet 1 and I've heard that Bitch Planet 2 is even better. It is set in a patriarchal future where women have to behave between a very strict set of guidelines. If they misbehave, they are sent to Bitch Planet where it's basically a big jail full of women and they are forced to fight each other. I think they can get time off or something. I can't remember. It's ages since I've read the first one. But yeah, I like the premise. I like the idea. I hope we never end up there. That is it for me. That is my book haul. I hope I didn't waffle too long. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you've read any of these, let me know what you thought of them. If you're going to join in the spooky reading night, please let me know what you're going to be reading. And I'll be back soon with another video. Big hugs. Bye.